I'm here in Daytona Beach today with Mike and Mike has this awesome 123 wagon and he's done a lot of work on his uh, 617 and in fact I think you if you weren't the first you were probably one of the first three to yeah. have a Benz Force modified pump yep um, so that's really cool but uh, rather than hear me talk about what you got why don't you tell us all the little things that you've done to your car to make it into something special all right well uh, as you can see I uh, I have a mess system over here which I really like and I incorporated that into the intake but what I like the best over here is that I was able to use the uh, blow plug relay power to go ahead and service the motor I mean the power for the pump which made everything really nice and closed in one area because I had you know the the 12 volts which you only really know use for the blow plugs anyway but um and um you know that service is over there i would recommend using the middle um jet i found that in this car that it, you know the uh, bigger one is probably a little too much um now that's a snow performance snow. 301 kit i believe yeah. so yeah it, it comes with three jets um there's a cc rating on that that you can go ahead and do but I recommend maybe starting off with the uh, the, the smallest one or, or or the middle one. And uh, what I like here too is the uh, you know the uh, air cleaner that I sort of fabbed up. Um, it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, you know I I don't really have an oil catch for this, but I did uh, make the uh, tube one inch instead of half inch, uh, which kind of you know slows down the airflow you know to the uh, filter. Um, I have ran this for a little while and I've, I've seen that, you know, the filter does get a little oily, but with a little bit of uh, cleaning, you know, with Windex or something like that, it's gone. It's not a lot. It's not excessive at all. So, and I also went ahead and I put a boost adjuster on there um, inside the cab so I can play with that as far as uh, um, 22 to, uh, what did we get on the run? 35? Yeah, 30, 34. 35, yeah. Like so, you know, with the weight, the wastegate closed, we got about 35 uh, PSI on that, so that was good. I added that little shock over there just for uh, uh, dampening purposes because uh, starting and acceleration, I get a little torque. But uh, as we know, the uh, motor mounts have those little tiny shocks down by them, and they're not really sufficient, I think, um, to go ahead and keep the motor steady. And it's just more supportive up here, too. You know, it's more of a, a, a leverage type deal. And I also went ahead and I went with a 6 uh battery cable to go ahead and give me that, that voltage that I need at the starter um, for that big compression I got. So, so now you've done a, a lot of little things that people might not think to do. Right. If I remember correctly, you, um, you changed out the lift pump. You, uh, you milled it out. Right, And right. then also the banjo fittings and the housing. You put different uh, right. size fittings yes. in. Uh, what I was getting is a starvation at... 48 rpms not a lot but noticeable which uh, I brought the uh, fuel system up to par as far as the flow you know got that a little bigger and uh, also went with the three inch exhaust out from the turbo which is really nice I like the way that sounds and also I'm going with a AMS oil 1540 synthetic it's a it's a really nice oil and it's a it's a good uh, engine buffer. Well, so, do you have any uh, future plans or anything you think you're going to change up? Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and, and and do the intercooler. Like I said, I'd like to you know move the radiator forward towards the motor a little bit so I could fit an intercooler and get the uh, double sided in, uh, holes in this general area to feed the uh, the turbo. But I think that would be my next build. So. Just for people that might be watching this, because I'm building a meth meth build right now, um, the issue isn't that the meth won't work. Uh, I think if I understood, it's really for longer hauls and things like that. Maybe you just want more of a consistent lower maintenance uh, kind of thing. Is well, that what you're after? I, well, I was thinking um, with the higher jet, you need more boost. And no, I mean switching to an intercooler. Oh yeah, switching to an intercooler was uh, on the highway for me. It was a little more. Uh, Long-term acceleration um, was my idea on that. Around town, I don't really have too much problems getting into the EGDs, the, uh, the high EGTs, uh, but with the intercooler, I think on the highway, that would serve me a little better as far as a full throttle acceleration. So it sounds like both meth and an intercooler could work. It really depends on your application and what you, uh, you want to do with it. And uh, yeah, so you have some more cars. Why don't we, uh, why don't we go check out uh, yeah. another ride? All right. All right, Mike, so uh, we're here with your, your other wagon. 
Um, why don't you tell us? Uh, actually, it looks almost identical. We've got a stock turbo, though. Yeah. Stock pump. Is it a stock pump? Yeah, it's a stock pump. So tell us about this ride, how you use it. It's obviously a little different. It's more of an overlanding type concept. Yep. So uh, give us the lowdown on this. Well, you know, this is my daily driver, and I use this mostly every day. Um, this has a stock pump, like he says, but we took the Alda and we, uh, we upped it up all the way a little bit to get the most fuel we can. All right, and we also did a three inch exhaust on this too, just to get the, get the, get the exhaust down. Um, this one right here, we run on anything from corn oil, tranny fluid, kerosene, home oil, or diesel. Um, anything that you want to put in this thing, it'll run. Um, it saves uh, a little bit of gas money and uh, keeps the uh, cost down low. Uh, we have a different little air filter over here. Uh, this one right here, um, as my other one, I did some suspension modifications. I went ahead in the rear and got rid of the uh, SLS system out of this because it was just not the ride I liked. I know some of your purists are going to be like, what the heck? But I got uh, a Conaline Ford, a Conaline F or E350 rear springs in the back of this with uh, regular uh, Bilstein shocks and it gives me a real nice sedan ride which I like a lot and uh, I've loaded this car up plenty and as soon as the uh, the coil overs get to the aggressive part of the coil I have no more lowering so it, it brings it really right down to level I have it raised up a little bit you know it's a little higher than normal but not too far so when I do load it that kind of brings it down a little bit but not much awesome I also have the, uh, the bigger cables on this battery too. I have a friend in the Marine service that, you know, we usually do that for boats, big old batteries and boats um, and stuff like that. So basically this is just uh, an everydayer. You know, there's no performance here. Yeah, you know, just uh, to get you around town. So do you have any future plans for this? Or are you just going to you know, drive it and enjoy it? I, I'm just driving it and enjoying it. You know, I, I, I feel that there ain't much maintenance here. And if you know me, and I got a lot of parts for these cars. So it keeps the cost down on repairs. Yep. So, uh, you know, I got a lot of what I drive. So this is uh, an everyday driver for me. You get to talk about your 115? Yeah, let's do that. I like that car. Yep. Sure. All right. So. Ooh, let's uh, let's pack up and go check out the, the last ride. All right, Mike. So this is uh, way out of my wheelhouse. We got a old gas engine, right? So yeah. why don't you uh, explain what we're looking at? Obviously, we don't do much, actually, any of, of this stuff. You probably get a lot of these parts, but uh, this is just such a cool ride. I wanted to have you tell us about it. Well, this is a '75 230 um, carburetor with a Stromberg carburetor. Um, it's uh, it's pretty nice. It's it's uh, it's got no rust on it. It was a California car. I did some modifications to it. Uh, we got a new head gasket on it. Uh, you know, spark plugs, wires. It's got an electronic ignition, which helps it really nice. And it's also got this uh, nice uh, AC conversion. Um, they went with a Sandin uh, AC compressor, a 508, um, which is really nice. It you know brings the air down to 47 degrees inside. It's really nice. The only problem we got is it had the old York compressor, and the York compressor had a little more power, so the uh, I got to adjust the expansion valve to let a little bit more liquid in at idle. So I'm not blowing, I'm not really blowing cold at idle, but as soon as I'm off idle, I'm I'm blowing 47 degrees, so that's good. So, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, you know, I think this has got like 64 original miles. You know, it was, it was a Craftsman. You know. <laughs> you know? had that power tube from a blower for that extra power we we're trying to get with rod that's a joke yeah yeah we, yeah i'm sorry i can i can hear the trolls now <laughs> but i was getting ronnie you know it'd be nice to go ahead and get a little turbo kit for this you know i don't know how many of them are out there but the other thing i did too was i uh i put a 560 uh sedan 16 inch uh ac fan on the front there and that really made uh the uh, condenser cooling a lot. It's totally OEM. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I, I never would have known that if you. Yeah, I had to bend these pipes a little bit to widen them out a little bit, but this, the original one was only a 10 inch, yeah. so it wasn't it wasn't really big at all, and uh, it didn't have. I just got a, a big full size battery for it. The one that goes in there um, helps the starting up a little bit. Um, really nice car. I like the white walls. I, you know, the tint, the style. It really drives nice. It drives like before it's time. It does. 
So honestly, in my opinion, not every car needs to be modified. They're perfect just the way they are, whether yes. they're broken in or not. There's just something about it. And for me personally, I, I dig this. Yeah, I think it's an know, awesome car. You know, I agree. Um, I have a 560 motor sitting on the side of the garage over there, which was, let's do it. Yep. But now after driving it and having it as a running vehicle original, it's, it's nice to have it like the way it is, you said. Awesome. Yeah. So Mike also has a, a Mustang that he built. A ton of work in that. I uh, gave him a hard time because we're not into Mustangs, we're into Mercedes. Yeah. But we'll, we'll go ahead and close out with uh, some screenshots and uh, possibly a burnout, uh, depending <laughs> on what I was able to capture from the, uh, right. the passenger seat. But Mike, I want to thank you. Thanks for hosting me in Daytona Beach. No worries. And uh, it's a pleasure to finally meet you after, after hey. these years. So Yeah, after being an enthusiast for so long and trying to modify my 617 diesel, I came across him and he made me happy. <laughs> he made me happy, this guy. So let's go. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, we're out. Yeah.